This January, Warner Bros. released on YouTube The Science of Superman, a one-hour documentary from the Superman Returns era, where scientists, writers, and more try to explain how Superman's powers work, or in some cases how they don't work. But honestly, I personally don't remember a single instance where his powers had not made sense, at least two. No, no, I, I can explain that. What? Uh, uh... Hey, Superman can't do that. Hello, I'm Edgar Miranda. In the ear. Good people of YouTube, welcome. If this is your first time here, please know I've been expecting you. Click subscribe, hit the bell, and take a seat. Let me entertain you. If you have ever been in a discussion that starts with who would win in a fight, Superman or X, or if you had spent hours on the Superman homepage, my guess is that the science of Superman is going to be a very entertaining watch for you. I will leave a link to it in the description below. This documentary presented many arguments. Some I agree with, some I don't. So in this video, I want to share my understanding of the nature of Superman's powers based on what I've seen throughout the years on movies, TV shows, comics, different websites, and more. So, I present to you <clears throat> the science of Superman, according to me. Superman was created in 1938. That's gonna be 83 years this April. And much like the character itself, his powers have changed over the years in many ways. And with that, the explanations we fabricate to explain them. Emphasis on fabricate. Being a fictional character, Superman can do nothing, can do anything, and everything. Ugh. So why bother with trying to understand and explain how he does the things he does? Well, for the same reason I know the full lineage of the Targaryen dynasty. Because it's fun. So let's dive in. Kal-El of Krypton is a member of an advanced humanoid species whose cells can store large amounts of energy. On planet Earth, that energy comes from the yellow sun, which unlike Rao, Krypton's red sun, provides him with enough energy for his alien biology to develop superpowers. Does this make sense yet? No? Great. Heat vision. This is an easy one. That same energy that is stored in his cells can be released in concentrated beams from his eyes. X-ray vision. So when you have these flashes, you can see through anything? People? Objects? Sometimes I can see through things, other times it's like an X-ray. This one is kind of a mess. Because you see, the way we apply X-rays in our world is we put a plaque behind an object and we apply the radiation to the object and the plaque registers it. And that's what we see at the doctor's office. But Superman doesn't put a plaque behind everything he sees. And the documentary explains that probably what we understand as X-ray vision is something more similar to sonar, like submarines or bats. But that is more related to hearing than with sight. Kind of a mess. Telescopic vision. Superman is able to see objects that are very far away. The way I see it, and how I think this could be possible, I liken this ability to the lens array an eye doctor uses to measure your sight. Depending on how he sets the lenses, you are able to focus on pictures that you wouldn't see otherwise. In Kryptonians, this array must be part of the anatomy of their eyes, that can be used when in superpowered state. Microscopic vision, basically the same concept, adjusting his vision but with a different application. So heat vision, x-ray vision, telescopic vision, and microscopic vision. And I'm sure I'm forgetting many other visions that are in the comics, but these are the ones I care about. 
and this is just scratching the surface of his powers. Make sure to check part 2, where we'll be looking at hearing, breath, invulnerability, speed, strength, and flight. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, maybe check another one. I shouldn't. Come on. Do it. See you next time. I can't come into this room because of the kryptonite. Jimmy, I want you to try and kick it into the fireplace. Good boy, Jimmy.